Hi everyone, welcome to IntelliPath. In today's video, we will be learning about what is Bitcoin and future scope of Bitcoin. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and also hit on the bell icon so that you will never miss an update from us. Now, let's begin with the agenda for today's session. So the agenda is introduction to Bitcoin, technology behind Bitcoin, Bitcoin wallets and types, how do you buy a Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining and its types, blockchain job trends, pros and cons of using Bitcoin, and lastly, the future scope. Let us begin by understanding what exactly is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency without a central bank or single administrator. It can be sent from one user to another through the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network without the need for intermediaries. Bitcoin was introduced in 2008 under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. The implementation of Bitcoin was released as an open source software. So if I tell you, launched in 2009, Bitcoin is the world's largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization. Unlike fiat currency, Bitcoin is created, distributed, traded and stored with the use of a decentralized ledger system known as a blockchain. Bitcoin's history as a store of value has been turbulent. It has gone through several cycles of boom and bust over its relatively short lifespan. As the earliest virtual currency to meet widespread popularity and success, Bitcoin has inspired a host of other cryptocurrencies in its wake. Moving on, let's talk about the technology behind Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the name of the best known cryptocurrency, which is the implementation of blockchain. So to understand Bitcoin, we need to first understand the concept of blockchain. Blockchain technology is the latest buzz in the industry today. So it is a continuously growing list of records called blocks linked and secured using cryptography. So it is an incorruptible digital ledger of economic transactions that can be programmed to record not just financial transactions, but virtually everything of value. Now, let's take a look on how does the Bitcoin blockchain work. The blockchain is simply a data structure where each block is linked to another block in a time-stamped chronological manner. I can say it is a distributed digital ledger of an immutable public record of digital transactions. So every new record is validated across the distributed network before it is stored in a block. So all the information once stored on the ledger is verifiable, auditable but not editable. Each block is identified by its cryptographic signature where the first block of the blockchain is referred as genesis block. So to access the data of the first ever created block, you have to overpass from the last block created to the first block. Our next topic would be Bitcoin wallets. A wallet is basically the Bitcoin equivalent of a bank account. So it allows you to receive Bitcoins, store them and then send them to others. So once a Bitcoin wallet is installed on your computer or a mobile device, it will generate your first Bitcoin address. Each address has its own balance of Bitcoins. However, the address can be changed whenever you want to. Our next topic would be types of Bitcoin wallets. So there are various Bitcoin wallets or clients available in the market. So let's take a look at each one of them. The first one would be your web wallet. Web wallets are websites or the online exchanges that will allow storage of a Bitcoin. So one significant advantage of web wallets is that we can access them from anywhere in spite of which device they are using. For an example, we have blockchain.info, Coinbase, etc. which are all web wallets. The next one would be mobile wallet. A smartphone wallet or a mobile wallet makes it really easy to scan QR codes to make quick payments via phone only so there is no need to go to a web browser to do the same. An application on a cell phone wallet it can store up the security key of our Bitcoin addresses and it can enable us to pay for the things straightforwardly with our phone. As an example, we have Bread Wallet, Mycelium, Airbits and Greenbits. Next, we have Desktop Wallets. There are applications that can be installed on the personal computer like desktop or laptop in order to provide the desktop wallets. In addition to depending on the transactions on the network, these softwares can also empower us to create a Bitcoin address for fast transfer and getting the virtual currency. Example, we have Electrum, Multibit and Armory which are all your desktop wallets. Next, we have hardware wallets. A piece of hardware 
which is used to store private keys which are nothing but your critical piece of information used to authorize outgoing transactions on the blockchain network in a secure hardware device are referred as your hardware wallets. So as an example, we have Ledger Nano and Trezor for this. Moving on, we have paper wallets. A paper wallet is a printed piece of paper containing keys and QR codes that are used to facilitate your cryptocurrency transactions. It is the most secure cold storage solution for your bitcoins. So as an example, we have Coindesk and Betatrust. Next, we have multi-signature wallets. So these wallets require multiple private key signatures to make a transaction. So if I give you an example, we have Carbon Wallet, Coinbase, Blocktrail, Electrum, CoinKite, which are all your multi-signature wallets. Our next topic is how do you buy a Bitcoin? To start with, a user must install a virtual wallet onto a PC or a mobile device. The wallet keeps track of your Bitcoin balance and all the transactions. Next, a Bitcoin can be bought either through online payment company, cryptocurrency exchanges or payment services like PayPal. Once the funds are available, a buyer can place an order for a Bitcoin similar to trading stocks through various online exchanges. Bitcoins can also be purchased from third parties which sends the coins directly into the virtual wallet. Now, let's discuss about Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin mining is the process of adding transaction records to Bitcoin's public ledger of past transactions or blockchain. This ledger of past transactions is nothing but your blockchain which is a chain of blocks. So the blockchain serves to confirm transactions to the rest of the network as having taken place. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides blockchain certification training mentored by industry experts, the course link of which is given in the description below. Now let's continue with the session. Bitcoin consensus algorithm allows for the creation of new bitcoins by the process of mining. So this particular process involves four steps that is the autonomous check of every transaction, proof of work algorithm, confirmation and independent aggregation. So now let us have a look into each one of these steps. So the first one would be your autonomous check of every transaction. So here we will be checking for every transaction by each full node in light of an extensive rundown of criteria. We have a whole lot of criteria so that has to be followed in order to check for every transaction of your Bitcoin. The second one would be proof of work algorithm. So before sending transaction to its neighbors so each bitcoin node that gets the transaction will first confirm the transaction so that this will be ensuring that only valid transactions are proliferated through the system third one would be confirmation so every node confirms each transaction against the long agenda of criteria of which some are listed below so the first one is neither list of inputs or outputs are empty okay and then a matching transaction in a pool or in a block in the main branch must exist like this we have a set of criteria to be followed so that you know we will be able to get the confirmation regarding the bitcoin mining the fourth step would be independent aggregation so independent aggregation of the transactions into new blocks by mining nodes is combined with you know the exhibited calculation through a proof of work algorithm so we have an algorithm which we have to follow in order to perform the independent aggregation of the transactions in your bitcoin moving on so we have certain requirements to begin the bitcoin mining so to start bitcoin mining so the following are required so the first one is your competitive mining computers also called as RICs, low cost power supply mining software as well as your mining pool membership now let us talk about the types of Bitcoin mining. So we have two different types of Bitcoin mining. The first one is your solo mining. So here the miners endeavors to produce new blocks all alone with the returns from the reward and transaction expenses going all together to himself. So this enables miners to receive extensive payments with higher variance which is like longer time between payments. The second type is your pooled mining where the miner pools assets with different mine workers to discover blocks all the more regularly with the returns being shared among the pool miners 
in rough correlation to the measure of hashing power they each contributed. So this enables the miner to receive little payments with a lower change, that is the shorter time between the payments. Moving on, let's take a look into blockchain job trends. Blockchain has emerged as a promising technological alternative for enterprises all over the world. According to Glassdoor, the demand for blockchain-based jobs showed a growth of 300% in 2019 as compared to the previous year. Next, let us discuss about pros and cons of using Bitcoin. The pros are, it's super fast because the transactions are instantaneous if there are zero confirmation transactions or they can take around 10 minutes if a merchant requires confirmation. Bitcoin transaction fees are minimal or in some cases free too which make them really cheap. So it's absolutely decentralized because the currency is decentralized, you own it. No central authority has control over bitcoins. Once bitcoins have been sent, they're gone. A person who has sent bitcoins cannot try to retrieve them without the recipient's consent under any circumstances. So, never worry about chargebacks and it will provide best payment security because the transactions don't require you to give up any secret information. So, they use two key transaction security that is public key and a private one. It is non-inflationary because only 21 million will ever be created under the original specification of Bitcoin protocol. And it's really private. It's like having a clear plastic wallet with no visible owner. Everyone can look inside it but no one knows whose it is. And the last one would be you can make your own money. That is you can certainly buy Bitcoins in an open market but you can also mine your own if you have the computing power. Now, let's discuss about the cons. So the cons include volatility, non-government regulations, irreversible and limited use, legal risks, possible funding of illegal activities, losing the keys and scaling issues. So when Bitcoin was created by Santoshi Nakamoto, a limit was set of 21 million Bitcoins that could ever exist, which is why some regard Bitcoin has been absolutely scarce. And this scarcity is what makes Bitcoin so valuable, but also it is what makes its price vary because the price is now the only variable that can change to ensure demand. The next topic we have is the future scope of blockchain. So without a doubt, blockchain technology's benefit will soon attract businesses and organizations around the world to invest more in it. It is still in its starting phase, but this one of the newest technologies will take a little more time to gain traction and it will sure require patience. However, the pros of blockchain are hard to ignore but the technology will indeed help various industries as the verification for every piece of data that goes in and through these blockchain systems will be a preventer of many adversities. So we believe that in the nearby future, people's trust factor will soon increase in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies but doing more and more improvements and research is equally important as well. Some of the limitations that cryptocurrencies presently face such as uh, the fact that one's digital fortune can be erased by a computer crash or that a virtual vault may be robbed by a hacker may be overcome in time through technological advances but what will be harder to conquer over is the basic paradox that term in cryptocurrencies, the more popular they become, the more regulation and government inspection they are likely to attract, which in turn disintegrates the fundamental premise of their existence. So we hope this helps to gain some knowledge about Bitcoin and its implementation. Thank you so much. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPad provides blockchain certification training mentored by industry experts, the course link of which is given in the description below.